The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, Phyllis. <coughs> Uh, I'm gonna ask you if you can hear me. Just uh, send me rest one. Hello, traders. <coughs> if you can hear me, press one key. There's a chat box on your right uh, side of the screen. Uh, send me. Press one if you can hear me loud and clear. Sound check okay? Yes, I hear. I can see many more. We gotta begin in just another one minute. Right? So yes, let's begin uh, the presentation. This webinar is uh, about how I went, how I lost my 50% uh, of my capital in about three years, and then how I turned it around and uh, recovered all my uh, lost amount and went up to 120% from there. So let me just tell you a brief about myself. I've been trading from around 2012-13 and uh, like everyone, initially uh, I was attracted to, because of limited capital, we all get attracted to intraday and futures because futures is where you don't need to invest, uh, like you only need 20 to 15, 20 percent of your margin to buy one lot, which is why we get attracted, like future looks very attractive. And uh, most of us end up losing money in futures. I'll explain you why we lose money there and why we should not uh, trade futures, at least not in the beginning of your uh, career when you have little or almost no experience. And when you don't know how to trade futures, it's like very dangerous to start with. So uh, I started trading in uh, 2013 or mid-12 and uh, in about three years I lost half of my capital there and uh, then I was making something I was losing, making one day and I would lose the entire amount or maybe more the next day. Then uh, eventually I, uh, I, was, I was not really making uh, Errors on the technical side of it. I would I would buy the right stocks, but I was making errors on on risk management, on not cutting my losses uh, at the right time. I would hold on to uh, losing positions. Just uh, I would hope that they would come back and uh, and and I would break even or expect some profit out of it, which is what we all do. We we end up hoping. And we do not act on what is the market telling you. We, we just uh, hope that 
uh, the stock will turn around the next morning and and I would be out of that loss. But which is what? It it doesn't work like that. <clears throat> then I uh, started reading and I started uh, analyzing my mistakes and all the uh, all the successful traders who made a lot of money from here, they had few things in common, which was one was you have to cut your losses short. You have to keep your losses short. You that's the that's one thing that you will find common with every uh, trader who's traded successfully, made a lot of money. This is one rule that will save your capital and it will save your confidence. It will give you it, the system that you will trade. It will give you the confidence to not only raise more capital from here, from your friends or family and invest here or like like any any business idea when you will start a new business initially if you have some capital with you you go to your friends you go to your family you raise more money and start the business because you have the confidence of uh, uh, in that business idea and and that's how it works so here capital is not a uh, uh, problem here the problem is you need to know how to trade even if most of you uh, have very small capital. We all start with small capital. I also started with a, a four-figure account, and uh, <clears throat> today I'm trading an eight-figure account only because and only because I knew I finally gained the confidence in my system. I started it started showing results, and when I had when I made triple-digit returns in in one year, that's when I went all out and I. I Whatever money I could gather, I invested in it, and since then it's been uh, very good for me. This is a pure business for me. This is not a hobby. This is not a, a part-time job for me. This is my full-time job because now it's my business. I invest money here, and I, uh, uh, I at the end of the day, I need returns. Uh, at the end of the month, I need returns, or could be at the end of the year, I need returns from here. This is how the business works. So it's not about one trade, it's about all the series of the trades, hundreds of trades that you will take. And after taking those hundred trades, you should be net up. That's how uh, this business works. So this was my brief uh, on uh, how I actually went from minus 50 to 120%. I'm going to explain you the process of it. Today, in this session, I'm going to cover the technical side of it, which is uh, we're going to make a list of uh, how I make list of stocks that I'm interested uh, in and uh, why I'm making, why I'm selecting those stocks and putting that in list. This is what I'm going to cover. But let me tell you one thing at once. This is the least important uh, part of the game and this is not uh, easiest part and the least important part, this is not going to make you money. The real money, the real factors are which is are risk management, trade management, position sizing and psychology, which is we are going to cover in session one, session two and session three. Today is just to uh, uh, the technical side, how I uh, make a list and uh, why I buy those stocks and I'll explain you the reasons why I uh, went in those stocks. So as you can see this uh, this seminar, this session, one is sponsored by uh, Spider. This is the software that I've been using for last uh, seven, eight years. And this is the only reason why it didn't sponsor me because this is, I use and it gets my job done in like uh, after one, after a practice of one, six months or one year, all this job will be like a, the, make, making the list of the stocks that I'm interested in. It is a five to ten minutes job, which which is why you can do all this with your day job. You do not need to leave your job and come into all this without making sure that you make your your system is profitable. So. When you're doing a day job, you need your software, you need right tools. 
so that you can get the job done within uh, five, ten minutes, or half an hour of your uh, uh, from your day. You can go for the free websites also, but uh, but the list process will take like two hours, three hours at least if if you start in without the right tools. So my advice would be this is what I use. It's on you if you want to use them. So let me just show you how I start uh, uh, the list that I have, how I make that list. <clears throat> let me share you this the other screen. Okay, so this is Spider uh, software that I use to. This is how it looks. This is the interface. So the first thing I do is I scan for stocks which are uh, above, which are within, which are within 25% from 50 to week high. So this is the box where I write 25%. This shows stocks which are within 25% of 50 to week high and 50 to week low. I'm not interested in the stocks which are within 50 to week low. I'll explain you why I, I only go for stocks which are within 50 to uh, week high. So when you click, when you type 25, you can do 10 also, you can do uh, 20 also. So I go with 25. And when you click on generate report, this is how uh, the report is generated. So as you, now you can see it, it just took about 10 seconds. Now I have the list of stocks which are within 25% of 52 week high. This is how you can sort. These are stocks which are in high zone and at the bottom. 52 week low zone. I'm not interested in these stocks, uh, the lowest. I'm only interested in the stocks which are within high. So you can save only these high scripts to a group. You can make one group where it will add all these high stocks in that group. I've already made this list here. After adding, I have this list ready with me, which is, this is how it looks. So this is the, this is the list of stocks that are within 50 to be high. And uh, I'm going to tell you, this is just the first step, how I uh, filter it further and how I delete names from it which are not fitting my criteria. I'll explain you the criteria, but before I do that, let me tell you, uh, explain you the, define the title which is super performance, what is actually super performance. So we say that uh, uh, this whole session is about super performance. So what is super performance? It could be a 20% return for some, it could be a 200% return for some. But when I talk about super performance, it is how you can turn your small account into a big account within a short period of time. Like I, it's the slide says, it is turning small amount of capital into a big fortune by investing in stocks which have high probability of going up, like 200 or 300 percent or more in a very short period of time, like your one year or two. So this is like if you have, or let's say, a four-figure account, your goal is to turn it into a five-figure account or a six-figure account as soon as possible. If you manage to do it, that's super performance. So there is no number to it. There is no 10% or 50% to it. Or the whole idea is to increase your capital by only investing in stocks which are having the highest probability of, of going up, of dramatically going up. 
not just 10% or 20%, I mean 1x, 2x, 3x kind of returns from uh, such stocks. So this is what super performance is. So the reason why we go for 52 week high list is, uh, this is all about demand and supply. If you, if you, you want to invest in stocks which have high demand in the market, how do you, how would you analyze high demand? Only if the price is going up. This is the best indicator uh, to, to see if the stock is in demand. And how do you see the strength of the demand? Just by comparing if the stock, if how much the stock is up, let's say in the last six months or last one year, is it 10% up or is it 1000% up or 200% up or 300% up? The more gains in let's say one year, it shows higher the gain, it shows good strength. So would you want to invest in a stock which is just 10% up or would you want to go in a stock uh, which is up, let's say 100%. 100% up stocks is only because the institutions are buying, mutual funds are buying, the big money is going in those stocks. You need, let me tell you one thing, you and I don't move stocks, it's the institutions, it's the big money, it's the, uh, the big funds that go into a stock. So when they buy a stock only, then you see that dramatic increase. Why, why would they buy a, a invest in a stock? Why would they invest huge money in it? Only because there is some uh, uh, chance of this company doing great earnings, delivering great earnings, they're doing high sales and they're expected to continue this performance. The only reason a stock goes up is when they're when they're showing good results. Like the sales is uh, suddenly there is a sick company which is losing money and which has been losing for last let's say three quarters, four quarters or years. Suddenly there is a turnaround situation where the company uh, launched a new product and there it is uh, a huge increase in. Uh, uh, their sales because the demand of that product. So in the next, the current quarter or the next quarter following that the launch product launch, they deliver let's say 100% jump in sales. This is the this is what a, a a big money. This is the main reason why big money would chase that stock. So you need you don't need to get into the fundamentals of it. Like too much into it, the best thing, best indicator is the sales and earning uh, per share. But uh, this, these charts are enough, at least initially, to to know if the stock is actually in demand. The best way to see is how much is it up from 52 week low. How uh, if it's 100 percent up, it's it's it fits my criteria. So this is why we get into the list of uh, only trading stocks which are within 50 to be high and, and not stocks which are like not dead and not doing anything from years. So this is moving on to the next slide is after making the, after running that scan, which gave me around some seven to eight hundred names, which are within twenty five percent of a pre to week high. The next step is to how to filter this list further. So there are certain criteria that the stock has to meet. Only then it stays in my list. Otherwise, I take it off and I'm not watching it. So when I get messages like what is my view on it? I do, if it, my, my answer is if it is not in my list, it's, I, I'm not interested in the stock. So these are the, these are the, the trades that you see on this slide. Uh, the stock, every stock that I can be keeping in my list has to uh, have all these trades. Remember the, all these trades, not just one trade or the three trades out of all these six trades. The stock has to have all these trades to, uh, to stay in my list. 
So the first uh, criteria is uh, do not trade stocks which are below for uh, trading below 30. The reason is normally if you see these penny stocks, these single digit stocks, they are there because they're there for a reason. They are there because they have been losing money and they have been sick for years. So in order to first see uh, that these stocks qualify, that these stocks have the strength, let the institution bring them up from, from single digits to at least 30 or 35. This is a way of knowing that there is a demand of these stocks by these institutions and I, and I, and I expect this demand to continue in the future. I am happy, I would want to enter a party when it's like happening and not be the first one to party, if you know what I mean. So I am really not interested in stocks which are in single digits. I would let them come, go up 100-200%, let's say from 10 rupees to 20 or 30. The stock will only go from 10 to 30 only if there is a good reason. And the re best reason is sales. If there is an increase in sales, which we will, which we can always go and check on on NSC India, VAC India, and see the results. If there is an increase, so first criteria is if the stock is above is below 30, I'm not trading. I'm not looking at it. I'm only trading stocks which are above 30. The next major criteria the stock has to meet is the 200 moving average line should be trending up for at least three months. I'll, I'll show you how, how it looks. Okay, so this is a weekly chart of, of man industries. Let me just go on the daily. This is you can plot this simple indicator. It's available anywhere. It's a 200 period moving average. So yeah, uh, this is this is the 200 moving average, and like I said in my uh, the second criteria is that the line should be trending up for at least three months. If it is not trending, uh, if it's not up from the up for at least three months, I believe that stop from the list. So here was the list. These are the stocks that I've added and uh, <sighs> one second.
नमस्कार यस सो दिस इज हाउ यू प्लॉट टू हंड्रेड मूविंग एवरेज लाइन ऑन अ डेली चार्ट एंड नाउ आई विल गो वन बाय वन टू सी इफ द लाइन इज ट्रेंडिंग फॉर एट लीस्ट थ्री मंथ इफ इट्स नॉट एंड आई विल डिलीट द नेम फ्रॉम फ्रॉम दिस लिस्ट एंड फिल्ट इट फॉलो so if you see the stock is this is definitely this red line is up trending definitely in a very clear up trend from last more than 3 months so i'm going to keep it i'm going to keep this one too this one is a not really a good definite trend from 3 months if you see this is flat it has just started trending which uh actually this has been trending from December, so it 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 meets my criteria, so I'm gonna keep it. A whole entire. So this one is is not in a clear uptrend. This is flat. If you see, the uptrend has just started in just like last month, so it doesn't meet my criteria. So this is going off my list. Like this, I delete, press delete, and it goes off. So you go one by one. This is. This this process is just like once a week you have to do it because this line is very slow to react. You won't uh, have to go it every day. Once you make it like on the weekend, you can update this list once, and uh, that's about it. You don't have to do it every day. So like go one by one and see if it's up for uh, three months or no. Like this one is definite a no no. This is just started. This was flat and just started going up in like last month. So again, this one also goes off. So this is how you uh, filter the list, check this criteria. There is a, a clear trend to want it going up or not. Like these names that I'm going one by one. uh these names that i'm going one by one yeah uh, they like this is clear red line here and uh this will stay in my list this is a flat red line 200 moving average is flat here it has just started trending up in last 30 days or so so this Goes off my list. I need clear uptrending red line. This is a clear uptrend. This this stock is clear uptrend. It uh, I will keep in this stock in my list. Again, this one, Bal Krishan Industry. This will stay in my list. Bata is a clear uptrend. So you go one by one and see if the line is trending. If you have little bends there if it's not trending for three months just simply delete it there are many opportunities in 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 this market you will find ample stocks meet in this criteria you don't have to keep jump in this list like like this one is is fairly new but let me see if it's been trending from oh it's trending from five months it's up from five months so i'll keep uh, this stock so uh <clears throat> if you uh on set so uh thus the second criteria 200 moving average should be rising for 3 months this is how you delete it next criteria that uh was in the 
the the slide is 50 ma 50 moving average should be about 200 moving average let me show you how you uh, you see okay so this is how you add the same way just add on the moving average a 50 moving average plot it on the chart and see if this green line that are uh, this green line is a 50 moving average simple moving average for me and this red line is a simple 200 moving average for me all you have to see is this green line should be above red line if green line is not above red line the stock is going off my list right <clears throat> see in all these cases you will find when you're going for 52 week high stocks most of the stocks will uh, most of the cases you will find green line is, is above uh, red line but here we have one example this stock is within 25 percent of 52 week high list but this green line is not about the red line so i will not keep this stock in my list this goes uh, off my list and once again you keep going and see if like again this one DHFL this stock is within 52 week high list but green line is clearly below red line so because I have so many names where the line is about uh, the green line is about the red line so I'm not uh, like short of opportunities and delete this one and not keep a uh, average candidate in my list here so just like this you have to map just see where the line is about uh, the green line is about red one let you see almost nine out of ten cases this line is about the red line at the click of a button you can just scroll down and see how fast the work is if you have the right tools So in most cases, green line is clearly about red line. So now we move on to the next criteria, which is the current price should be above 200 moving average and preferably above 50 moving average also. So <clears throat> what I want is the current price, this current price should be above red line and I would prefer if it is above green also because if you have so many options so many uh, trades available in the market why go for average candidate why not have candidates which we, uh, which where the price is above 50 and 200 also so once again you go all over from start from the top and see where the price is is it above red or green or not Here you can see five out of six cases price is clearly above both the lines. Let me show you an example where the price is below this line I'm going to delete <coughs> that thing okay see this one this one here the current price is clearly below 200 moving average I don't want this stuff in devil housing clearly below a red line I don't want this stuff this one also IGPL clearly below 200 moving line so when you have so many options you don't need to go for the, the average ones like I said just keep deleting names which is not meeting these two uh, criteria this is how you filter your list further now the next uh, condition that I want to stop to meet is
let me explain why I think you do not you could not see the third criteria where the price is the fourth criteria where the price is above 50 and 200. <clears throat> this stock in the sun zinc is treated, current price is clearly below uh, 200 moving average and uh, so I don't want this stock in my list I will delete it. I'll show you one more example where the price is below green point red line. Like most of the names if you see are the current price is above this line only because the stock is anyway trending in within 52 week high range. Okay, so this is one example KCP. Here the price is The price is trading below 200 moving average. So I don't want this stock in my list. Telton, this stock is trading below 200 EMA also in this stock does not meet the first condition. Second condition which was the 200 MA should be up for at least three months. Two, two reasons why I will not keep this stock in my list even though it's within 25% of 50, from 50 to week high but I, it doesn't meet the other two conditions so this goes off the list. So this is how you go you delete names and and shorten your list and keep only the best names in your list. Now the next condition is the stock should be up at least 100% from 52 week low. I, I, I recently explained you why a 52 week low, the 100% movement is, is important. It shows that there is somebody who is buying this stock and there is huge flow of money to go in the stock and there must be some reason for it. I'm not interested in the reason here. What I'm interested in is it shows us that the stock is in demand, there is a trend, there is strength and this is what strength can drive the stock further. Some of you may think that it has already gone up 100% up and uh, that's already like a missed opportunity but most of the time super performance of that's just the beginning i can show you tons of examples where after the first 100 percent move there have been moves for like further seven times eight times from from that point so don't think that 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 you missed the bus and uh, it's it take it as a sign that it shows strength. You, you need strong buying, you need strong buying force behind uh, behind you. Your buying, like I said, your buying is not going to make the stock go up. You need institutions, you need flow of huge money coming into that stock. So the first sign is 50 to stock going up at least 100% from 50 to week low. How you can check? Go on weekly chart and see the lowest point in last 50 last one year and see if the current price is up 100% or no. That's, you can do it like, you just have to look at the, the chart, you don't have to cal take your calculator and do the calculations. Just look at the chart and see the lowest, lowest point in the last one year is, is, is this one around. If you have problem in like, if you're not sh sure, you can always Go, you, if you're using the software, you can uh, press button and it shows you 52 week low. There is this is how you can just have the press of the button. You can find out 52 week low, or you can go on the website and see where the 52 week low is. I normally don't have to go anywhere. I can just visually see the lowest point in last one year is somewhere here, and current price is 1200. It's it. It shows that the stock is up 100 percent. 
So it's this is I'm gonna keep this talk. It meets my first condition. It's about the 200 MA is clear up in a clear uptrend from last three months. The stock 50 MA is above 200 MA. Current price is above both the lines. And the fourth, fifth condition, which is 52, the stock should be trading at least 100% up from 50 weeks ago. The stock is up, is, is, is makes my uh, 52 week low condition also. So you go one by one and see if the current price is. Uh, 100% up or no, like in this example, Kaya 52 week low is 825. Current price is only like some 30% up, 30 40% up. It does not meet my 100% condition, so I am uh, not going to keep this stock in my list. The reason is some of you may say that okay, why not? I can buy, I can buy early and make some extra gains, but. Do you really think that you, you want to be the first one where the trend is weak and uh, the stock can act uh, like volatile because especially if you see here like for this example, the stock went up, this is a young trend, the, the moving average is very, it's not 200 moving average if you see the red line is bending and the trend is not definite. So you enter here and then stock went flat again and then came up and then flat. It is setting up nicely, but it is not uh, uh, strong enough to actually put your hard earned money in stock and expect super performance from it. I'm only talking about super performance. I'm keeping stocks strong to like meet the objective of super performance. So I'm not interested in names which and where trend is weak, young and not clear. I would keep looking at Kaya stocks like 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 these where trend is young and once it once it meets my criteria of all the criteria that i'm telling you then i'll put it in my list i'm happy entering later but what i want is i want strength i don't want uh, uh buying at 100 i i'm happy buying at 200 but i want uh the the trend in that stock should be clear should be strong i should have a strong reason to get into the stock so, Kaya does not meet my criteria. This goes off my list. Uh, next name is KEC. You see clear up trend. The stock is right now 452 week. Low is definitely. Uh, okay, so I'm sorry. This, is, this also does not meet uh, the 100% criteria. So, KEC goes off the list. This is. Uh, last, this is the lowest point in the last one year, and the stock is not, it's almost there, but not above 100%. So, I don't want to have this thing, like I said, there are, I'm not short of options. There are many options in the market right now. Indian market has been trending, so let's just go with names which are at least 100% up. Uh, this one, this is current price is 300% up from last uh, 52 week low, almost 300% up. It's a clear uptrend, really there. Stocks don't go up 300% for no reason. They are going up only because there is a good morning, fundamentally they are good. It's a healthy company, they good profits, uh, making good sales. So these are the stocks that have the highest probability of continuing the trend further and giving you a turn. So I'm going to keep this stock in list and not worry with that it has already gone up 300% it has no room to go uh, up further. Stop think, thinking like that. There is, there in last two years, like I said, there are many examples where stocks have gone up 10, uh, 10 times and 5 times, 6 times. So there is sky is the limit. You just have to find good trending stocks and take the trade, which I will explain you uh, in the next few minutes, how you actually take the trade uh, in these stocks. So just going one by one and seeing where the uh, lowest point is. If it's up 100%, it stays in my list. If it's not 100% up from 52 week low, it goes off my list. So 
you go one by one and keep the name which is meeting this criteria. If it is not, delete that name. Like Manapuram is not up 100% from 52 week low, it goes off minus. This one is definitely above 100%. Is up 100% from 52 week low, so it stays in my list. So, like this, you have to go one by one and link the names which are not meeting this condition. Now, the next condition is, and the last one is, The stock should have made a new 52 week high at least once every four to six months. Like, for example, I'll give you, I'll show you one example. Look at the weekly chart of this, of this stock. The recent 52 week high, which is the highest point you see in last one year is this. Just check the date of the stock. This is of, of this bar. This is 25th of January. The stock has made a new high uh, in the last three months. So it meets the criteria that the condition that I have. The stock should have made a new 52 week high at least once in every four to six months. This stock has met that condition. It made a new 52 week high just three months back, so I'm going to keep this stock. <coughs> Apollo Tires, this one is again, it has made a new high just last month. It stays. I'll show you an example where this, this condition is. It is not fulfilled. So this one, you see, uh, maybe this is also, this also fits. Most of the stocks that I'm showing you are is meeting this condition only because, like I said, 52 week high stocks are trending. They are uh, making new highs every few weeks. So, like here, as you can see, most of the stocks is meeting this condition. So, if there is one name which is not meeting this condition, you will take that stock off the list. And uh, right now, I see all the stocks are actually meeting this condition. Let me see if there is a stock uh, which is not made a new high to pick me up. Okay, so I think almost maybe this one. Yes, magma. This stock made the last 52 week high this stock made was in September. Clearly, way back. If you see in last so many weeks, since September 22nd, this stock has not made a new high. It has not crossed this highest point. So I don't want this stock in my list. This is average performance. This is an average candidate. It does not meet my last condition. Magma will work my list. The day it crosses this level and meeting all the other conditions that I explained to you, just before this point, I will get magma in my list again. For now, magma goes off my list. So this is how you go one by one and see if a stock has been made a new high, 52 week high. If it's within four to six months, keep that stock. If it is not, delete it. Let me see, find one more example there. Then. then we will move on to the next section of how to actually a I think this is also the numbers also. Yes.
pretty much I just would find one example. Pretty much every stop is making this uh, last condition. Yeah. So this sums up how you actually filter the list further. I'll show you the example one more time. Magma. Yeah, see, magma, the highest point here was made on 22nd of September last year, which is clearly more than four to six months from today. So this is an average performance candidate. I don't need this stock in my list. I don't want to take a trade in this stock unless and until it meets all my six conditions. Right now, it's not meeting my sixth condition, which is even if you, like you see, it's not even meeting my uh, condition where the green line should be above the red line. This is another reason why I don't want this stock in my list. So to just sum up once once again, just the first condition was I don't want to play uh, take trades in stock which are trading below 30. The 200 moving average should be about should be rising for at least three months. 50 moving average should be about 200. And the current price should be above 200 definitely and preferably above 50 moving average also. The current price should be up at least 100% from the 52 week low point. So to explain you in an example, let's say the 52 week low is at 100. Is, so the current price should be at least above 200 or more. The last condition is the stock should have made a new 52 week high at least once every four to six months. So these are the six traits, these are the six characteristics that you need to see in the stock. Uh, only then you keep that stock in your watch list, otherwise it goes off the list. And this list you make only once a week, which is you do on the weekends, once you have weekly closing on Friday. And once you get into practice of making this list, trust me, after a month, it takes only five minutes. You would know that these names are going well. And if there is a new name, you can just add uh, that list. So it's not a time to human process. Initially, you have to, yes, give some time to it to get into the habit of uh, making this. But after a month, if you have the right tools, you, it, will, it is a five to uh, ten minutes job of, of sorting the list that Softest and free. So now we have the list, and uh, now I'm going to talk about how I actually take the what kind of trades I take, uh, things that I look from uh, in a stock. Once I have the list, I keep it on my uh, like I review it every week only on weekends to see if there is a buying opportunity or not. If there is a buying opportunity, I, I uh, place my bids in the morning and then I um, shut my screen. I'm not watching in product price action. I'm not interested in product price action because it gets you uh, worked up. The more you look at it, you will uh, be emotional about it especially if it is going against you initially. If there is a point, let's say you start a trade and it goes against you 2-3%, 5%, your emotions will come in and you will not really look at the, you will forget the reason that why you took the trade. So it's best to stay away from the screen and take, just place your bets. All these decisions, let me just tell you one thing that I am not watching markets uh, during, like I don't watch live action. Everything I do, I do after the market is shut and in the evening, I just go through my list and see if there's an opportunity. If I find an opportunity, I place the bid in the morning, all my buying bids, 
all my stop losses and then I'm off. I shut the screen off and I in the evening I uh, review it if, uh, if my stock is behaving well or if there is a reason I need to get out without explaining what, what other reasons, how I take that decision. So you can, the point of, my, my reason of explaining this was you can do it with your day job, you do not need to uh, have like live access, keep looking at the market during your work hours. I think that we done in the evening after your work or on the weekends to, to see which are the stocks are which are setting up nicely in the coming week and you can place the risk accordingly. So the main work is done on the weekend after a Friday closing. On Saturdays and Sundays, I sit down and, and I go through the weekly charts of all the stocks that I uh, have put that uh, in my watch list. And if it's setting, if if there is one stock that is setting up nicely, I take a trade. So let me explain you the 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 trades that I uh, take and which have made most of the money for me. You let me before I begin the the explain you the the patterns that I trade. Let me tell you one thing that you do not need any indicator like RSI. You do not need any CT. You do not need any indicator because these indicators are lagging. The all you need is price and volume to make your decision because these these indicators the indicators that are popular are made popular they they use price. Uh, information to calculate the value of uh, their, of itself. So why are you are going for an indicator when the price is already leading forward and giving you the information that you can take and uh, and take make a decision based on it. So initially, what you need to do is for people who are starting out or for people who are not really making good gains, you need to change your goal uh, for first 50 trades. What you need to do is you need to stop thinking that I won't make money. What you need to do is for first 50 trades, your goal should be to have a system which is consistently giving you money. Once you have that system ready, you can go all out and make consistent money for life. But for first 50 trades, for first few weeks, your goal should be to have a system. Unless and until you have a trading system, you cannot really make consistent gains year on year, month on month. So once you change your objective, you will not really get worked up. You will not feel disappointed if your trade is not working. You need to first have series of trades, which I would say at least 50 trades to analyze if you have a good system or not. And once you have that system, your confidence, psychological game that I keep saying that this game is all about mind and all about trade management. Once you have the right confidence, you will end up finding money to, to invest. You will find different ways of raising more capital or getting money from here and there like how I manage and I make good gains. So there is a need to change the goal. You can't make money overnight. This is not an easy job. Don't expect that you will come uh, you, after this training you have, I just explained your pattern and you will start making money for the next morning. I can give you the technical knowledge, but I can't really control how you, you react emotionally. That I can give you the tips how to control your emotions, but you have to work on them. You have to work on them. And after you take 50 trades, it takes time. After you take 50 trades, you are getting you. Those 50 trades will give you, uh, will put you in the right habit. Will give you an like uh, I'm not finding the right word. After like 50 trades, you will get the confidence, you will be disciplined and you will have a major force behind you that for next, all your next trades in the future, you will act like that. Like it's like an emotional, it's like a training that you're giving to your brain to act in a certain way 
like cut your losses short no matter if you have it set a stop at 10% and that stop is hit you will not really think again have second thoughts in your mind you will cut your trade that's how i do it if you if followers who are following me on twitter you will see how emotionally de- detached i am when i'm cutting my losses that's one thing that you that's the major uh, uh, factor that is responsible for your profits you need an emotional training you need to be uh, strong and uh, un- like detached from your trades there should be zero emotions involved like like every a successful trader says these this is just a trade for you an opportunity to make money if it is not working like as you had thought initially just take out your capital look at it as your free capital so that you can put this capital into a new opportunity do not get like keep sticking keep once you losing money do not just stay with that trade like but this is easier to say than like actually do it so the, the reason why i'm saying 50 trades is because once you take 50 trades you will get that habit you will get into a habit of actually sticking to all the rules and act accordingly so initially your goal should be only uh, uh, protecting what you have and following all the rules first 50 trades should not to should not have a, like your objective should not be money or profits your objective should be protecting what you have and following all the rules it's about the process it's not about if you look at your profit and loss statement you will always fall down you will not um, have a profitable system in the end for first 50 trades only look at the process only look at whether you're cutting losses uh, at the like the, the correct stop loss only see if you're actually nailing down profit you may closing the trade at the target level that you had calculated it's a, it's all about process once you have that process ready once you are are in the habit of following all the all the rules that you have laid you can go all out you can uh, put more money you can then have the objective of making money for you you have the entire <clears throat> you have many years ahead of you to, to take to make money but your first 50 trade should be only about protecting your capital and 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 your confidence that you have actually uh, made money you have actually stuck to the process and now you can go uh, from your 51st trade you can then look at uh, making money after so now let me go back to the buying pattern that i created uh which is the first one is the only breakouts i trade there are different breakouts <clears throat> but you can always assess the quality of the breakout and uh, and see if it's a, if it's a very high quality breakout or if it's an average quality breakout i'll show you an example where uh, how i judge the the quality of the breakout and and go for it so this is one trade b b l that i took um, on 31st may 2017 at 3950 i'll tell you how i um, took the, this trade let me pull up the charts now <laughs> If you see, if you notice one thing, I don't have any indicator here. I don't use any crossover or RSI signals. All I need is patterns and 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 these these bars that you see here. This is a weekly chart of BPL, and uh, I'll explain you how I took this trade. So see, this stock just went up from. 22 to 40 almost 100% up in just four weeks i need stocks like these this shows huge strength this has the highest probability of going continuing the strength but 
you don't play, play just because it's 100% off. This is just one reason why I, I'm going to keep it in my uh, high alert list, like ready to buy list. I will look at it every week because this is a weekly chart. This one bar is one week. I will look at it every Friday, closing and see if it's setting up nicely. And if it does, then I will take it away. I'll show you the next week one by one. See now there is after a huge run up, this week it, the, uh, the stock is taking resting because it's already up 100%, it's resting here. It went up, but again after uh, the next week it's still resting. So what I need is, I need consolidation. This is consolidation. If you notice one thing, the stock went up from 22 to 40 with a huge volume. This is volume, but when it's coming back, suddenly the volume is right. This, should, this is a good positive sign. The green days, green weeks should always be on high volume and the red days should be on low volume. This shows that institutions, there is major money is not going out of the stock. Only some minor profit booking like traders, Swing traders who invested only for a week or two, they've got good gains and they're selling it. But major players like institutions, give the funds, they're not going out of the stock. This is a healthy sign. So keep looking at it, but there is no entry at the moment. It is still selling up nicely. I will continue to watch it and act when there is an entry. I'll explain you how I enter it. Now you see in this week, you can do one thing when you have this weekly chart. You can in, you can also view. You will have to review it every Friday. But once every evening, like I said, I do the work after uh, market closes. See how it's setting up on daily basis. In once in the evening, just look at it once in the evening and see how it is setting up. Look at this one. There's a huge run up from 22 to 100, then stock pulled back, then went up again, then pulled back. But this time, this pullback was higher. Then this low point, there is a, uh, if the right word is contraction of volatility, if you see this, uh, here from 43, the high, highest point is 43.60, stock went down to 35. There is a volatility of eight points. And then if you calculate from here, it's 44 to 38, volatility of only six points. Here, so here the volatility is contracting. Last time it was eight, now it's only six. This is a good sign. This is what you need to see if volatility is, is, is the stock is drying up or not. Look further and now the highest point are this was eight points. This is six points. Now, if you see from here, the stock went till here. And then again, pulled back. This is only from 42, the highest point is 42. The lowest point is 3850. The volatility has dried even further. And this time, the contraction is, is more than half of last uh, volatility. This was six points. This is only 42 and 3850, three and a half points, almost 50% drop. This is a good contraction. So here, this was eight points, then six points, now only three point points. This is a perfect candidate for me to take an entry. Where would you enter? I entered above the high. You can place your trade here. 
above 42 and and like like i said i do my work in the evening i play i place i would place the bid here in the morning at above 42 and calculate my stop which i will explain you in the next session how do you actually calculate your stop i will place my bid here and leave it and let the market do its job and see when uh, it gets triggered it, it got triggered the next day on 7th of june and after that you are in this trade all you need to do is you need to review this trade every day once in the evening to see if it's actually doing the right action or uh, there is a reason to exit from the stock you go one by one as you can see the stock went up 51 from here from 40 after triggering the 42 level it went up to 52 again a minor consolidation you can add up here which is called uh, averaging up which again is covered in detail in the next part uh, in the next session i mean here these are the trades that i am interested in again a consolidation you can enter above the high of, of this point or the lowest the, the smallest candle that it forms if it does see it just triggered up and from there it's acting nicely for three days it did it went up the fourth action is a little volatile but it lacks volume so i'm not worried i will give it one more day and see if actually there is a, a problem for three days it went down, but there is no volume in it and it is not really my uh, uh, stop or not breaking the the base that it just formed. I can still, some of you can book some profit here because you're already in a heavy profit from 42 or if you're an aggressive trader or investor, you can continue holding the stock. There are my pitches where I will explain you uh, how to actually take that decision in the next session here. You see there is a bounce and bounce is again with huge volume. This is a healthy sign that whenever the stock is going up, it's going up with volume. Whenever it's coming down, it's not coming down with a big volume. So these are the signs where this is how I take the side to actually continue with the stock or no, or I'll come out of it. And if you see, I kept adding to the stock at 42 then I added third time at 45 and I booked 75% at 53 made 14% in this trade 14% of my entire capital from this one trade alone you need only there is another fact that I would like to tell you that even the best traders in the world they have a hit rate of only less than 50%. We are right max four times or five times out of 10 trades. But when we are right, we make huge money. And when we are wrong, we only lose small. The reason is our, our stops, our losses are under five, seven, six percent But when we make money, we make three times, four times, five times of our losses, average losses. Here in this trade, I bought at 39, 42, and I closed at 53. Majority of my games I locked in at 53. And this finally I trade, closed my entire trade and added 16% in under in only two weeks. Now imagine 16% return that you people make in one year. Here you made in just two weeks, then you latch on to a trend which is very strong. This is the power of stocks which are within 52 week highest. I'll show you one more example, the, the breakouts that I played. There's one more thing I would like to tell here in this next trade. BL Kasha. <clears throat> BL Kasha, this trade was taken on 16th of June last year at 32.50. I'll show you the, the pattern which was forming in this stock.
So here you have a stock which went up from 20 to about 32, which is more than 15% jump in just three in four weeks. That's a huge sign of, uh, of a strength. Now what you need to do is you need to just, like I explained you in the last example, you need to keep looking at it every day and definitely on uh, uh, the weekly closing once on the weekend and see if it is setting up nicely. So if I go one by one, this is, let's say we were here and we look at the weekly closing, which was like this, there is no entry signal here. Next week, the stock price going like if there was a buying, but it could really uh, uh, stay above the highest point, which is this. So there is again no uh, reason to get the stock right now. There is again some volatility. The stock is down, but down with low volume, and it's not actually breaking any point. It has not broken last week low. So there is no reason to. Uh, not look at the stock. Keep looking at it and see if it's setting up nicely. Now, this bar, I would like to explain you how I actually place my bid right above the high of this bar. You see the, like I said, volatility. Here, the volatility is 30. High point is 34. Lowest is 29. So, volatility of about 5 points. The next one is 33, 50, 29, 50, so about four points. It is drying up, but not a significant uh, drop in volatility. Here, same thing. This week, the volatility was exactly the same, so no uh, positive sign on that part. But on this one, there is a sudden drop in volatility from 32, the highest point, Lowest is 29.65, so about uh, two points here, two and a half points here. There is a good drop in volatility from from four points to a uh, drop of almost like around 50 to 60 percent drop in volatility. With and also the volume is is has gone low. This is a perfect condition where you can actually take the trade. So there is one uh, psychological aspect attached to uh, to taking uh, to actually deciding if you want to take a trade or not. These are all high probability trades. This trade only has a, a good probability of working in your favor. It it can this pattern can fail. I am ready to for that. But here everything is setting up nicely. So there is a good probability of it working further. If you keep that in mind, you will be prepared for the worst case scenario also. Here, once you are ready with, with that thought and do your calculation, calculate how much you want to buy, which is called position sizing, and you will place your bets here. The highest point is 32, and you uh, take your trade at once it crosses 32. And if you see the next week, it crossed, but it, I would have to, I would like to first go actually, this might confuse you whether it went up first and then down, for that you will have to go on the daily chart to see that. But uh, I I took this trade in this week and uh, I remember that this trade, this lower stick first, after that it had crossed, so it never hit my stop loss. And the next week you see the stock is actually finally started going up and here you see after the contraction in volatility the stock went up again from 30 to 50 almost 70 percent 80 percent gain here in just four weeks and if you see my uh, read this is how it panned out i got it 32 then I added more to my already uh, winning position at 38. Then I added another at 41. Added fourth time in 44 at 44.50. And finally I closed at 70% in 
profit I made, I told at 46, the stock went up till 51, 50. So the point I'm trying to make here is, you do not need to look for a new stock to make money. If you have a position and if it is doing well, why not go more, why not invest more in it? Why not look for a new candidate? If it's setting up nicely, you need to uh, make the most out of it. So this is why I average up. This is why I make, how I make most of my gains in a very uh, short period of time. To, and this is how you actually uh, add to super performance. You need strong stocks. And the only way to know that you have a strong stock is when the price goes up. So if you have a stock which you bought at, let's say, 100 and it goes to 110, that's the best indicator that uh, uh, your stock is actually a good stock. Look for an entry and put more money in it, which I will explain uh, how to uh, average up, which is uh, the content of second session. Here, coming back to the, the chart, the, the slide said the type of breakouts I trade. So the major trade here is the breakout should happen within four to eight weeks, not more than that. So this is here consolidation going on. This is one week, two week, three, four, five, and on the sixth and on the seventh week, there is a breakout. So if stock is breaking out under eight weeks, under like between four to eight weeks, these are the breakouts I'm interested in. If the stock is breaking up out after a consolidation of let's say nine weeks, ten weeks, twelve weeks, I find an average. Like I said, I don't need average candidates, I need candidates which are meeting all my criteria. So when I say the types of breakout I trade, I take only names which are within uh, breaking out from consolidation within four to eight weeks because that shows huge demand of stock. Everyone rushing into it uh, for this stock. My institution is uh, going for this stock and they're not uh, willing to wait for a, a, a consolidation of 20 weeks or 26 weeks. Here there was a run up of 100%. And within four weeks, the stock went up another 80%. This is the this shows strength. So when you taking a breakout, look for uh, breakouts which are happening within four to eight weeks. That's the main key. Within four to eight weeks, not less than four, not more than eight. If it is taking more than eight weeks, delete. Do not take that trade because it has less probability of giving you good returns in a short period of time. I'm not saying that it is impossible that the stock will not go, but this whole game is all about probabilities. So when I'm talking about probability, I will go for a stock where, is a, where there is a high probability. And if you want to verify, you can, I can show you another, more examples where whenever the stock has broken out in under between four to eight weeks, it has performed very well. Uh, I'll show you my next example. Philip Carbon, another uh, uh, proof that shorter consolidations in a strong uptrending stocks work beautifully. Like you, you see, this stock is in a huge uptrend, and finally, here it started consolidating. Count the number of weeks one, two, three, four, and there is a breakout here. Within four weeks, the stock broke out, and see the gains. From this point, 93, it's, it touched 132 in just three weeks, which is a gain of all 50 to 60 percent. 50 percent return you make in one trade in just three weeks. So when you're taking a breakout, this is this is the trade that I want under within four to eight weeks. I'll show you one more example. Yeah. 
even BPL, if you notice, the consolidation was only my first example that I had shown you. The consolidation was only one, two, three, four, five, six. Seventh week, the stock broke out from here, the highest 44, it broke out and look at where it went. From 44, it doubled. There is a 100% increase in just seven to eight weeks. You, your investment doubled from here to here in just seven to eight weeks. So again, another proof that shorter consolidations have more power than longer consolidations. I can show you the same stock with uh, where it stopped working, where the consolidation, like look at this one. Here, consolidation is going on. There is a, a drop in volume, so clearly a good sign. But is it really uh, setting up nicely? Is it breaking out within four to eight weeks? Look, let's just count this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Already six weeks, and not we're not even close to. Uh, the high point. Seven, eight. It's eight weeks. The stock is not even uh, uh, close, like it's not close to the breakout zone. So for me, this is a faulty uh, uh, consolidation. I'm not, even if it breaks out now, I will not take this name because I, like I said, I don't want average performance. It's more than 10 weeks now, the stock. Now the stock is finally going up. And look at this one. This is a big failed breakout. Next week it tries to go up, but look at this condition. The stock is back. After giving a false breakout, it's back to where uh, it's had started from. So anything less, anything more than eight weeks, a breakout after eight weeks of consolidation, I'm not interested in that name. So this was my first condition. The, these are the patterns. This is my first pattern that I created. Uh, which has actually given me the most money. And let me tell you one more thing. You do not need many tricks. You just need to be great at one technique. If you work on next 50 trades with just one technique, I can tell you for sure that you will make money every time you find that trade. And, and if you find a setup, most you will make money almost every time. So you need to, you just need one trick in your hat to be consistent uh, winner in this uh, stock market game. All you have to do is you have to look for this setup and, and be perfect with it. And, and your confidence will be really high. Once you find that setup, just go for it because you know that most 9 out of 10 times, 7 out of 10 times it works and it works, it gives you good gains. If it does not work, we have risk management in place. We will cut our loss and we will keep our losses short and we will come out of it and we will recover from the next uh, trade where your gains will be much larger if it actually works in your favor. So all you have to do is you have to just work on one technique which is this one works for me. You could maybe you are already a successful trader and still just uh, watching this webinar to find in your techniques. If you have one technique already which is working for you, do not change your strategy. Just stick to that strategy and keep uh, working on it so that whenever you 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 have the confidence, you should have the confidence that whenever you find that technique next time in future, you know that uh, you will uh, make money most of the time uh, from that setup. So for me, this works uh, like a charm. Whenever there is a consolidation of uh, uh, four to eight weeks and the stock is breaking out within four to eight weeks, I go for the straight. I, 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 I keep my stop loss, I do my risk management, I calculate my position size and I place my bets and then I leave, then I leave the stock market to do its job and I'm done. After that, I don't have the uh, power to uh, control the outcome, but I have uh, the power to actually decide whether I want to leave the trade or not. If it's setting up nicely, I make my decision and let the market decide to do its job. If it is continuing and giving good performance, I will stay in the trade. If it is not, I will come out of it. <clears throat> so this is one uh, uh, method that I use. The second was <clears throat> the 
second was uh, BCP by Mark Minervini. It's called uh, volatility contraction pattern, which I explained you one in one example. I'll give you, I'll show you a sample uh, chart where there was a volatility contraction and uh, we took the grade. This is a weekly chart of uh, DPL. To see if volatility is contracting, I all you have to do is uh, you have to just see the highest point here. It is 45. Uh, let me just draw it for you. You see this is a uh, one second. Yes, here. So you see there is a rounding formation here. The stock. Look at the highest point. The highest point is this. This is 30. Uh, the highest point is 45. From here, the stock went down to 23. This is the lowest point. This is the highest point. This is the lowest point. If you do the calculation, this is from 45 to 23, there was a drop, drop of 22. Forty-eight percent drop from the highest to the, the lowest point, a volatility of 48%. Now, if you see the next from here, from 48, the stock went up to 42. And from 42, it went down to only 36. Now do the calculation again. From 42 to 36, a volatility of only 16%. So last time the volatility was 48% and now the volatility has dropped two third and it's only 16%. That's a huge drop. It's not a half drop. It's more than 65, 70% drop in the volatility and it's a constructive sign. And if you see this consolidation has no volume, another constructive sign. So I am interested in taking this trade, but I need to see if uh, whenever it, it breaks out from here, I will take the trade. Which is why uh, this was my reason of taking the trade. See, this is huge. From 16%, from 48% to a drop of 16%. Now, I will take a trade whenever it breaks out of this four weeks of consolidation. I will place my bids here at 41 and I will take a trade and look at what happened. This is the trade that I, I, I took. If you want to see, I can show you. <clears throat> this is 
BPL. I took this trade on 14th of September last year. Sorry, 14th of September 2016, I took this trade and look at this. I, I entered here, but if maybe I was not watching it around this time, but then I saw the breakout and, and this was uh, the, the way the candle had closed. I still took my chances with the risk management. I, uh, because when you do the right risk management, you can, uh, if there are high, still high probabilities of the trade working, you can still go for it. Otherwise, the best entry was somewhere here. I, I took the trade and look at the result. It's It went up 100% from here. I entered here. Okay, so this is the week, like I said, I entered in on 14th of September, which is a uh, breakout of, in this week, which is the breakout of this point. This is where I entered and uh, you could have entered here also or and add it somewhere here also and look at the result. From, even from here, there is a 100% jump, 100% return in just three weeks. So this is the power of volatility contraction. If you see volatility drying by dropping by 70%, by 60%, that's a huge perspective sign. I want a drop of more than 50% in volatility and a drop in, you know, uh, backed by a drop in volume. If, and then if it breaks out, you take the trade. You do your risk management, you place your stops, and you take the trade and let the market do stop. If it's a good stop, this is the kind of returns that you can get. From 40, from 42 to 100, more than 100% jump, I entered here, and I can show you that I, I added, like I said that I averaged up. I added more at around, okay, so, I have not added that tweet here, but I have entered more at 60. I I got more at 61, and look at it, 100% return in in just three weeks. So if you find good trending stock, these are the kind of returns that you can get. Never like imagine that uh, this is. Don't think that the stock has already gone up 100%, and it does not have the power left to go on the 100 percent it was up it was up already like from 52 weeks low if you see it's up 100 percent from after the breakout one of the 100 percent jump so these are the two patterns that i trade every uh, these are the only two patterns that i trade i don't get into other methods uh, because it's been working nicely for me and i i'm i made my new chains only from these two trades so Now the next part is to review uh, one second. How do you actually evaluate once you bought the trade? What are the factors that you need to see to uh, to make your post buying uh, decision? Like whether you should continue in the trade or you uh, should come out. What you need to do is first sign good signs follow buying. Like in in BPL. In this example, after the breakout, you see that the buying is 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 coming. The stock is not falling back in. Yep, this is the breakout point. The buying even after the breakout for next two weeks, the stock is closing higher uh, against last week. So this is a follow up buying that I uh, want in my stock. So there is no reason for me to exit the stock and and close this trade and. See, it's the buying is still happening. So, if you see follow buying after a breakout, that's a huge positive sign for you to uh, continue to stay in the stock. The second is count green days versus red days. So, when I say count green days versus red days, the second condition. So, when I say green days versus red days, it means how many times uh, the stock Closed in green versus uh, versus red days, like how many times it closed up versus closing down. If you see BPL, this is the breakout. It closed uh, higher next week, higher the second week after that, 
and even on in like third week there is a green closing every time when it flows higher there is a huge volume increase so this is another good sign this is a weekly chart you can do the same thing on daily chart once you take in the trade see how many times it's closing if it in 10 days if it's closing seven days it uh, are green this is a good sign that you should continue in in stock if it's like five days red five days green that's an average performance and like i said you don't need average performance you can exit from that stock and look for something some of the stock where you can achieve super performance which has like the stocks those stocks have good probability of running faster next is up volume versus down volume like i showed you in this example in the same example see whenever the stock was down after the breakout i'll show you another example see this is here it broke out it broke out here bpl after consolidation of only 6 weeks it broke out here and then it broke out into a volume and whenever the stock uh pulled back there is a pull back here the volume is has gone down so you need to see how many green weeks have a uh, good volume and how many red weeks have uh, low volume if red weeks have low volume that's a good sign if green weeks have huge volume another good sign so this is how you analyze whether you should continue to stay in the stock based on a uh, volume indicator the next is the next is uh, i'll i'll complete tennis ball action after i talk about shallow pullback and talking shallow pullback means how is stock like how far is it pulling back like in this example the epl after the breakout the stock went from 45 to 80 to 84 and then it is consolidating but this consolidation did not even last more than 4 weeks and this pull back from 84 to 70 is under 20% it's not more than 20% these are shallow pullbacks this shows that the demand is so huge that in just 4 weeks the price reversed and made a new 52 week high look at this this is a new 52 week high the stock went up it's again consolidating and i want to see if this this pullback is is shallow or no look at this again a breakout just a minor pullback from 95 to 77 under 20% and lasted only 2 weeks so these are the shallow pullbacks that you need to see in your uh, uh, stocks if the pullback after taking the trade if the pullback is under 10 to 20% the of course lesser the better you uh, should continue with that trade the next factor that you can look for is tennis ball action so okay, i'll explain you what tennis ball action is in the same example epl it broke out from here and after that you need to see how many days within how many days the stock is you up trend it should be within 5 to 10 days not more than 10 days if it, if buying is coming back within 10 days that's a good sign look at this one within just a 5 day after the breakout 5 to 6 days of consolidation and the stock resume uh, it's up trend with a huge volume increase look at this 
consolidation days with no volume and now uh, within five days the stock is going up once again so this is a tennis ball action where you have shallow pullback and uh, uh, the stock is resuming up right within 10, 10 days so the the main point is shallow pullback and within 10 days the stock should resume with uptrend like if you see here again there is a drop let me see now we'll see whether the stock will resume with uptrend or no on the fourth day huge jump these three days again were low volume on the fourth day huge jump so complete tennis ball action within first here within five days the buying resume then after a drop of three days on the fourth day itself the buying resume again so it's not the condition is within 10 days it should uh, start going up and this is how tennis ball action works so these are uh, I will explain you this example one more time, EPL. For tennis ball action here, there is a five days of console. Uh, the stock broke out here at 44. After breaking out, it rested for five days. The, this consolidation was on low volume. And on the sixth day, mine came back. Stock made a new high. The rise is with volume. So this is a sign of tennis ball, like if the stock is bouncing within a 10 days period. Again, there is a drop, but within after three days, this drop was a low volume. On the fourth day itself, the stock went up. So this is a tennis ball action twice in this one example where the stock resumed and made a new high. So this is, when you see such signs, these signs give you the confidence that you should stay in the trade and not close. <clears throat> now, uh, this basically sums up the two trade methods I uh, use to take the trades. All these trades, the EPL, DL Kasha, <clears throat> Sun Flag. I can I, I can email you the, the sun flag trade how I took it on the, the pattern BPL trade I just explained you and these are the uh, factors that I look for to decide whether I should stay in the trade or not. Now we can start. Uh, I know I'm late here explaining the process, but you can email me your questions in case we don't get to uh, ask here. Since we are short of time here, because you can still email me and ask me questions, uh, whatever questions you have. So if you have a question, you can. Uh, I'm reading the chat. Yeah. So you can send me your questions and if you have a doubt about anything, I would be happy to answer the question. Yeah. Okay, so I have a question on the breakout pattern that I just explained. Somebody wants to know if uh, Okay, one second. Let me pull the chart first. Sun, okay, someone just asked me how I took the sun flag bit. Let me show you. Sun flag is uh, 
Sunflag is example of the BCP pattern I just explained. If you see, let me just draw the screen. You see the volatility uh, drying up again. One second. This, so if you calculate the highest point is 42, the lowest point is 34, or uh, volatility of 29%. One second. The lowest point is actually 43, so 42 the drop of 30 percent and now if you see from here to here highest point is 40 and the lowest point is 45 but drop of only 3 So here from here, forty two to thirty three, a drop of nine points and here, the drop is from 40 to 35, a drop of 5 points. So the volatility has gone down by almost 5 or 50 percent. And this is the, and the stock is within 50 to be highest, setting up nicely. And see, it broke out here. Again, like I said, all you need to look at this stock has a probability, an opportunity that has a high probability of working in your favor. You do the risk management, you place your, uh, calculate your stock, you calculate your position size, place your bids and let the stock do its job. And after that, this is how it works. And you want to evaluate your buying decision. Next week, it worked like this. It is, a uh, Perfect buying huge volume, the stock is closing higher. Next week there is a drop in price, but this is a, again uh, with uh, less volume. The price is within the, this uh, zone, there is no selling, it's not breaking any low. So I would continue to hold it even one more week and see if it's selling up nicely. This week again there is a selling, it tried going up, there, is a, there was a demand, the stock went up. Then selling came, but sellers could not take the stock further lower. It did not break the lower class fee. Again, I see no reason for it to uh, for me to exit the stake. I will watch it one more week and see how, uh, whether I should hold it or not. Here, the stock did break the low, but there is no volume, no major reason. Volatility has gone down. Here, the volatility is. Four points here. The volatility is almost two and a half points. So a positive sign that the volatility is high is is going down, and price and volume is also down. So this is not an exit signal for me. I need to see whether the stock is resuming. Here there is a huge volatility. Some of you uh, could. I mean, this could be a reason where you can book some profit and continue in the trade because this is a weekly chart. I will have to go and look at the daily chart of it and analyze on daily how many green days, how many red days, that way. And look, the buying came back within four weeks of consolidation. Like I explained to you in the, uh, my buying patterns, the breakout should happen within four weeks to eight weeks. Here, in this case, the stock resumed uptrend on like on fifth week. And from here, when I entered around 39, it's 
already 80, 100 percent returns in, in, in just about few weeks. This is this is July month and we are in September, about three months and the stock is up 100 percent. So this, this, this is how super performing stock works. They can give you huge returns like stocks like Refi, Goa Carbon, I have, I can show you, I'll email you all those, the trades that I've taken. These stocks have gone up five, six times in this 12 months. This is the power of a uh, huge buying. If you buy 52 each stocks, this is the kind of return that you can get on when you just need one winner in your uh, one trading year to have, uh, to achieve triple digit returns like I, like I achieved in my uh, trading last year. So this is how it sums up. If you have any questions, those who could not answer, ask me questions here, and I, can, of course, I could not answer uh, everyone here. You can email me. You have my email ID. You can email me your doubts, whatever doubts you have in this session. Also, the uh, if I if I did well or not, if you have any questions, you can ask me. And uh, if you want, you can also contact me for uh, personal one-on-one -on -one coaching. We this is my email ID and my you all I have my Twitter handle. So let's see you next time next week on Saturday. Same. Take care. Bye.